If you're a VC attorney still manually closing all your deals and you want to work more efficiently, I've made this video for you. I'll be showing you how you can generate all your closing documents without relying on tedious copy pasting, how to upload all the documents to DocuSign in just one click, monitor who signed and who hasn't yet automatically, and even compile all the counterparts into a final closing packet. And yes, all of this is possible without doing any manual work and in just a few clicks. And if you're wondering how I know all this, it's because we've been automating legal document workflows for the past four years. My name is Sofian and I'm an ex-DocuSign and founder of SoluSign, where we streamline the deal closing process for VC and fund lawyers by implementing, customizing and integrating the best legal tech stack. If you want our help to automate your deal closing process, you can use the link below to book a consultation with one of our consultants. But for now, let's picture how you currently do things. Let's say you need to collect signatures from 100 investors who need to sign a purchase agreement, a voting agreement, a right of first refusal, and an investor's right agreement. The old method that I unfortunately see way too often looks a little bit like this. You open your Word document template, then you duplicate the signature page as many times as you have investors, then you copy paste information from your schedule of purchasers right so you just copy paste information from your schedule of purchasers inside of the signature block then you double check triple check quadruple check that there are no errors and you your stress will end up with a very large file that you will upload to DocuSign add all your investors as a separate recipient in the same envelope which is super risky because if some of your investors don't sign on time then the envelope will get voided which means that you'll have to resend the envelope to everybody and they will have to sign again anyway before pressing send you check things again because you might not have caught all the mistakes in the first four times that you've checked everything then you will drag and drop fields for each investor in the signature block and then once you're done you press send and you pray that everything is going to go well i mean that's so much work and the bad news is it's not over yet because from there, you have to keep track of who has and who hasn't signed by manually crossing off of um, investors off of your scheduled purchasers. And once they've all signed, you'll download the PDF from DocuSign, extract their signature pages, put those pages back into the main document template, add the closing date, create an email for each investor, attach the closing packet for each investor, and send that closing packet email to each investor. But there is a much better way, much easier way that's going to take you only a couple minutes and you only need to set it up once and it will start automating all your uh, deals in the future. Let's start with automating the creation of documents. And you can do this by turning your standard Word document template into API Word templates. API Word templates assemble your documents on autopilot. API simply means that your Word template automatically connect to your data allowing documents to be created without doing any manual copy paste there are plenty of software solutions that can upgrade your word template into api word template but we recommend using word-based software because you won't lose the formatting of your documents and the configuration is also easier at SolidSign, we love to use DocuSign's word add-in, gavels, or even woodpeckers. And I've got a video about this in the making and next coming weeks that compares them all. Now, let me show you how this works with this simplified purchase agreement that we've got right here. To turn our Word template into a Word API template, we'll need to insert placeholders where we'll want the data from each investor to be added. These placeholders, for example, this one, will be replaced with the information contained in our schedule of purchasers. As you can see here, I have the purchaser's name in the signature block, and I also have the list of investments that the purchasers are going to make. I've only created a few placeholders for this demo, but you can add as many as we need. And actually, this table will create an additional row depending on how many investments that investor has made. Now, for these placeholders to be replaced with the data from our schedule of purchasers, we need to do what's called data mapping. And I promise that it's not difficult. Even my grandmother could do it. She's got Alzheimer's, so she'll probably won't remember though. Love you, Nan. Anyway, the easiest way to connect the schedule of purchasers data with your Word template is using a tool called DocuSync. DocuSync is a mass signature automation platform, and we built it for lawyers. It can send lots of documents and signature requests in minutes, making sure there are no errors in your documents without wasting any of your time doing any manual copy paste. It works by bridging the gap between your data, your template, your DocuSign template as well, and your document management system. It's very easy to use. You simply upload your schedule of purchases like this one 
inside of DocuSync, and then you'll need to map the columns of your schedule of purchasers here, these guys, with the word placeholders, these guys. Let me just show you how it works. This is DocuSync's data mapping page. To the left here, each record, each row represents a placeholder inside of my word template that I want to map to a column inside of my schedule of purchasers. For example, if I want to match the purchaser's name, the only thing that I need to do is click on this little plus and then type in purchaser. And then I'm going to choose my field purchase name, which comes from my schedule of purchasers. And if you're wondering how those fields got here in the first place, it's because DocuSync automatically detects all the placeholders from your template because it's connected. And don't worry, you only need to do the mapping once. You'll be able to apply this mapping to all your future deals seamlessly. And before we move further, I want to set up an automated convention for my documents, one for the documents that hasn't been signed yet and one for the version of the document that will be signed. For the version of the document that hasn't been signed yet, then I'm asking DocuSync to save all the documents as the company name, space, purchaser, the purchaser's name, space, and then the name of the agreement. Once my documents are signed, I just wanna add the word signed in between brackets at the end of the document. The setup is now almost ready. The final step is to create a project and add our investors inside of this project so that we can create our documents and then our envelopes. So I'm simply going to add a group of three investors. I could add as many as I wanted to, but just for this demo, I'm going to keep things simple and add three investors. Then I'll click on generate draft document and I'll wait a few seconds for all my documents to be generated. My three documents have been generated, so I'm going to open them to review that the information is correctly being replaced. So for the purchaser called uh, Frank Wright, Frank is actually using a trust. So the signature block should read Frank Wright Revocable Trust Data, blah, blah, blah. And we've got that right here. And here, as you can see in the schedule of purchasers, these are the right values. I'm going to do the same thing for my second document just to be on the safe side. So this is a document for Tom Peterson. Tom Peterson's name is here on my signature block. The information looks good. All right, I'm just going to pretend that my third document looks good as well. And we can see that the documents have been named, has been named the way that I want, which is fantastic. I'm now ready to send my envelopes. Actually, maybe I want to do a preview because I want to double check that the signature fields are located correctly. This is the preview, which means that the document hasn't been signed yet and allows me to check that Frank's name is correctly populating here. And that we've also got the signature block for Frank. That looks good. I can close the preview and send the document for signature. And to do this, I simply need to click on send. And I'm actually going to send all my envelope, three envelopes at the same time. Instead of manually uploading my documents inside of DocuSign, one at a time, I'm just uploading all my documents to DocuSign at the same time. As you see, the status of those envelopes have changed from draft to to be to queued and then from queued to sent. And that's the beauty of using a solution like this because DocuSign does all the tracking for you. DocuSync will take the documents that you've generated in the previous step and upload them inside of DocuSign for you in separate envelopes. This means that there's no risk that investor delays will void the envelopes by accident. Because yes, it happened to one of my clients before they started using this. And apparently it wasn't a fun exercise trying to fix and collect investor signatures again. Now, all my documents have been signed, so I can just open one envelope and sign it. I'm now signing the envelope for XYZ Capital. XYZ Capital signer is John Doe, so that works. That's exactly the information that we're supposed to have there. That's okay, just clicking on sign. And if you're wondering where how DocuSign knows where to place signature fields for each signer, on the document, this will be a video video for another day. For now, just know that it works and that you're no longer need to drag and drop your signature fields manually on your documents. The cool thing is that instead of manually keeping track of investor signatures in Excel or in your notes, in your schedule of purchasers, DocuSync will automatically show you who has signed and who hasn't yet. So we're looking at this envelope here and I've just signed the envelope as the first signer who was John Doe. You can see his status is completed and the second signer hasn't signed yet. So that's why the status still shows as sent. And if we go back to our list of envelopes being tracked, we can see that one signer out of two signers has have signed the envelope. That's very handy when you need to track who has signed and who hasn't yet, particularly when dealing with institutional investors who typically take longer to track to sign due to the uh, approval process that takes longer. And without this functionality, you would need to open DocuSign and try to find your envelope and 
try to see who has signed and who hasn't yet. Following up is also super easy from here because you can leave notes, you can assign the envelope to a collaborator like your legal assistant, but lawyers who use this like the fact that they always know what is the best next step to get that envelope signed. And that's typically using combination of notes and, um, and, and tasks assigned to their legal assistants. Now, of course, your DocuSign account can be configured to send automated reminders, but you already know this, but some lawyers prefer to send one-off reminders when they choose. And so this is what we can do here. We can just click on send resend notification and that will, that will resend a notification for all the envelopes in bulk, as opposed to doing it on a, on, on a particular schedule, which might annoy your investors. And if an investor's name and email needs to be fixed, then you can just open that envelope, fix the name and email for the recipient, and go back to the envelope and correct these details. By correcting, you again don't need to log inside of DocuSign if your recipient's email bounces back because the email has changed or maybe it was spelled incorrectly. Now let's move to the final stage of your closing documents workflow, the creation of the closing packet. First, let me sign a document so that you see what happens once documents have been signed. So I've now signed the envelope for XYZ Capital. And as you can see, the status has now changed to completed. So if I go to my sent envelope, it should have disappeared. And yes, it has. And if I go to my completed envelopes, I can find it right here. And as I'm speaking, the document is being uploaded. And what we want to do is to check the naming convention because now the, na the name of the document should say signed and it does. So we have all the naming convention fully automated for us, which is fantastic. And obviously we have the document uh, sign, which is here, which is attached. We also have the link to the Google Drive document. So if you were using Net Documents or SharePoint or OneDrive, the link is accessible here. And if you want to open the envelope, you can do it here as well. If you ever want to download the document directly from within DocuSign, for example, if you want the audit trail. And before you tell me that you have to add the closing date manually and that you totally hate doing this, just hear me out. There is a place in DocuSync where you can choose a closing date. And by default, that closing date will be pre-populated with a date the last investor of the set of envelopes signed the documents. But you can still modify it. In this case, I've only signed one out of the three investors, so it's not pre-populated, but I can just specify my closing date. And obviously the closing date can vary, so you can always choose what closing date you want. But when you're ready to add the closing date to your document, you simply click on add closing date. And this will create a copy of the signed document and add the closing date in that PDF and save the new version of that PDF, which now contains the closing date and add the word closed after the signed bracket. And then the next step is to create the final closing packet. And that's why we have this create closing packet button. This button will extract all the investor's signature pages and add them to the main document template, which also now contains the closing date. And that large combined document PDF that we will get as a result of clicking on that button will be named closing packet. And from here, you can still manipulate the PDF further. If you want to add side letters, you can do that. You can just still add documents manually, but at least you're not creating, extracting each signature page manually. For example, let's just say that you had, you had, you, you've collected signatures from investors for the same deal a couple of weeks ago, instead of manually adding these documents back to the final closing packet, you can specify which documents you want to combine and in which order you want those documents to show in your closing packet and DocuSync will give you the final PDF. Throughout the process, DocuSync will keep an audit trail of all the modifications made to the document in a version control log and automatically create a version number of each document you update each time a change is made to a document to help you with version, version control issues. And the last stage, of course, of this closing process is the distribution of the document to your investors because you'll need to get these large PDFs to investors somehow, right? You can do this by email or through a secured online portal or both. By default, all the documents that have been signed by investors are instantly synced with their online portal, but you can also bulk send a PDF copy to all these investors by email at once. So what's the moral of this story? It's that you don't have to feel miserable for weeks or even months when closing your deals. You can leverage the power of automation and AI. And if you're interested in getting help with your document, uh, with your deal closing process or broader document workflow automation needs, you can visit the page sorrysign.com forward slash docusync or book a call with one of our legal document uh, automation consultants at sorrysign.com forward slash book. I will see you in the next video 
where I'll be reviewing the top word-based document assembly tools. I'll see you then. Ciao.